the only problem was that I didn't have anyone to do these things with. I was like table for one. They were like no problem. I went to the movies by myself. People, other people actually do feel like this. This isn't just like a me thing, you know? How's life? How's it going? Hi, welcome or welcome back to the podcast. My name is Kirsten and I'm the host of the podcast of the Introverts Talk To podcast. Here we are again. I guess I should just jump right into it. Um, I'm sorry, my phone keeps ringing with emails and really random. I emailed my advisor and she did not get back to me. I feel like she's done with me. I've had like multiple Zoom meetings with her. I emailed her back and forth and I still am confused about my classes. I'm just like, I and I keep, I, I emailed her again and she was just like you know what this girl like she is hopelessly confused i'm not gonna engage with this anymore and i'm just kidding my advisor is actually really really nice um she called me back one day after like we were discussing my schedule and we ended our call and then like two hours later she called me back she was like you know what i told you to enroll in this class maybe you should actually enroll in this class i was like oh my gosh you're really still invested and i'm over here at an ice cream shop like anyway that was so random today i wanted to talk about just doing the thing just doing whatever it is that you want to do you know no matter what your situation is if there's something that you want to do but maybe you don't have anyone to do it with but you feel like you need someone to do it with it doesn't matter just do it you know i feel like you'll be more happy in the end if you just do it rather than if you just waited around for someone to be available to do it with you you know what i mean And that's what I've been, that's where my mind's been right now, okay? There are a lot of things that I want to do. So many different things that I want to do. I mean, I want to try new restaurants. I want to do things that I want to do. I want to travel. I want to do a lot of things. But at this point in my life, I don't really have many people to do those things with. And I feel like either I could sit around waiting for the perfect situation where I have someone to do these things with or I can just go and do it by myself, okay? And that's what I've been kind of grappling with lately. And I wanted to tell you a couple of things that I've done recently that I've been kind of proud of myself with because it marked (laughs) me jumping out of my comfort zone and just doing the thing even when I felt like, oh, this is kind of weird. I don't have anyone to do this with. So that's what we're talking about today. I feel like a lot of us deal with not having many people to do things with like we don't have many friends we might have some acquaintances that we know but we don't really have many people that are close enough to really call up and be like hey you want to go and do this maybe those acquaintances you don't feel totally comfortable yet to do that with you know and the only reason I feel like I, I know this is because of social media you know people talk about college loneliness and you know making friends in your 20s like they talk about it a lot and how how difficult it is and I feel like that has given me the want to actually even talk about stuff like this like the podcast because I feel like oh people other people actually do feel like this this isn't just like a me thing you know and college experiences not being what they expected you know I I feel like I can talk about these things because of social media you know you see people and they actually do talk about these things and how they are going through these things and even people who have commented on my podcast saying that they feel like they they feel seen, like they feel like they re- relate to the podcast. Um, it makes me feel like I can talk about these things. But when I was in college or not when I was in college, I say this all the time, like when I was in college, but I'm really referring to when I was living in college, when I was on campus, you know, living near campus or whatever, had roommates and everything. That's what I'm referring to. I'm still in college, but I'm not living at college. So I feel less in college than I did when I was living there. You know what I mean? But when I was living at college, my experience was not what I expected. And I and I talk about this a lot in the podcast. I mean, there's plenty of episodes probably where I'm talking about college and how it's not what I expected, you know, whatever. But I was living in a four by four apartment with roommates who were already friends and I kind of just like got my stuff in the in the apartment and, you know, got myself situated. It was like a four by four. I had my own bedroom and my own bathroom, but we shared a common area, like a kitchen, a living room and a laundry room and stuff like that. It was actually a pretty sweet situation if you are rooming with people that you really do like and like your, their, your friends. Um, It's a pretty cool situation. It's actually not that bad. Prices were a little bit up, but it's you get your room, your bath, you, in, in unit laundry. It was great. Anyway, we're not talking about 
Anyway, moving on. So that was kind of my situation. My roommates already knew knew each other. So I felt like I was coming into a situation that, you know, I was kind of on the outside of. I didn't know if when I was going into it, there would be other roommates that were moving in that were in my situation that I could kind of start fresh with. And it would be like, you know, hi, what's your name? You know, whatever. I don't know. I felt kind of weird because these girls already knew each other. They were very nice. They invited me out to dinner one night and it was it was good, you know. Everybody was, you know, friendly enough. But I never really got to a point with anyone in college that was deeper than acquaintance level friendship. You know what I mean? So I didn't really have anyone that I felt comfortable enough to call up and be like, Hey, you wanna go get dinner? Hey, you wanna go out and study? Hey, you wanna go and I don't know, go to the gym, like go work out, take a walk on campus. I don't know. Do you wanna meet up here? I didn't really have anyone that I felt comfortable enough to do that. And that's so strange because that's exactly what I expected I would have, you know, especially with how everyone paints college. Everyone paints college to be like this super social experience where you're going to make friends and it's going to be great. It's going to you're going to have close people. You're going to meet lifelong friends. And people tell you this all the time, especially people who are you know, out of have been out of college for 10 plus years. They're going to be like, it's going to it's going to be a great experience. And you're going to be fine, which you will be fine. But social life is not what it was even 10 years ago. So making friends at college was not easy at all. They tell you to join clubs, join organizations, get involved in your college network. That's what you're supposed to do. And that's how you meet people, which I do agree to a certain extent. But I don't think, you know, going deeper than acquaintance level friendship is, is very easy in, in college. Um. So anyway, point is, I didn't really have many people that I felt comfortable enough or even trusted enough to do certain things with that I wanted to do there there were I was in a new area there were new restaurants that I've never seen before that I really wanted to try there were new activities that I'd I'd never seen before that I wanted to try and I felt like it was a great opportunity to do those things but the only problem was that I didn't have anyone to do these things with right so I I would, I, I wanted to go and do these things. I wanted to try these new restaurants, but I don't know. It was a, if, if it was a burger restaurant, I can't, I don't want to order a burger and fries and take it home to eat, you know, because by that time it's going to be gross. But I also didn't want to go in the burger restaurant and sit down by myself and eat because uh, that's a, bit out of my comfort zone. I don't know if I'm ready for all that. So there were a lot of times where there were things that I wanted to do, but I didn't do them because I I didn't have anyone to do it with. So I learned very quickly how to keep myself occupied with things that were comfortable enough to do by yourself, which was basically just like going shopping, going to the mall, going to the gym, you know, I would, I would do, I was doing a lot of painting and, you know, promoting my business and stuff like that. I was doing a lot of stuff that was very comfortable to do by yourself. And I never really allowed myself to jump out of that comfort zone and go do something that I really wanted to do. Something that stereotypically you would do with somebody else, you know, there were so like looking back, there were so many different things that I wanted to do that I did not do. There were so many restaurants that I wanted to try that I did not try. But moving into this point in my life, I feel a little bit more, a lot more comfortable in myself to go and do these things. I think my main fear was that somebody would walk past me eating by myself and I would look like, oh my gosh, she's so lonely. She doesn't have any friends. That must be sad. Like that was like my, my, my biggest fear when it came to doing something like eating by myself at a restaurant. I did not want to look like that. So I, I would rather just pick up food from like Chick-fil-A or, you know, Chipotle or something and bring it home so I can eat in peace in my room, you know, without thinking that someone's portraying me as a lonely person, you know? I think that's the main reason that I didn't do eating by myself in public. But recently, 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 I finally jumped out of my comfort zone and did it. I did it. I ate by myself in public. Not like, okay, I'm not afraid of eating by myself in public. I'm afraid of eating at a restaurant by myself in public. So if it was like a Blaze Pizza, if you don't know Blaze Pizza, it's like a Chipotle for pizza, okay? Like you just go down the line, adding your toppings, and then you go get your pizza at the end of the line after they bake it, and then you go sit down and eat or leave, it doesn't matter. Chipotle, same thing. Like you go on the line, you know Chipotle, and you go, you take your bowl, and you sit down, you eat. That's not really what I'm afraid of, but something about sitting down in a booth and being served by a waiter by myself is what gets me. This particular time, I was like, no, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this today. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna get over this fear and I'm gonna enjoy it, you know? I'm going to enjoy it. 
In my last podcast episode, I talked about pushing anxiety away, just pushing away that feeling of social angst and just doing whatever it is that you want to do. Just push that feeling away and just do it. That's what I did in the situation. I was like, oh my gosh, I, this is exactly what I was afraid of. I didn't want someone to see me sitting at a restaurant in a booth by myself and eating. They're going to think I'm sad. They're going to think I'm lonely. Really, no one's really paying attention to you. They are too busy eating their own burger, you know? So on this particular day, if you live in Florida or if you know Florida or any type of area that is a big state with a lot of rural area, um, everything is far, okay? Everything is really way too far. I used to live in New Jersey where you would just go to the next town over, which was only 15 minutes. Like everything is so far in Florida, okay? And recently, my Apple MacBook Pro broke. It broke. It, it the screen cracked. It was it was terrible. It was awful. It was a terrible experience. I if you want to watch that experience, I posted it on my YouTube channel, my Kirsten Arts YouTube channel, whatever. My laptop closed on something and the screen cracked and then I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go and figure out how I'm going to get this fixed." So I went to a bunch of third-party places that were near me, like literally 15 minutes away, and they were like, "It's going to be $600. It's going to be a about $600 okay and I was like absolutely not I'm gonna just go to Apple and pay $600 I'm not gonna pay $600 at a third party place I'll just go to Apple get my get just get it done and blah 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 whatever Apple is an hour and some change away from me okay so I knew I was going to be driving to an area that I don't usually go to this is an area that probably has restaurants that I, I don't really get to eat at often. So I'm going to drop my laptop off. I'm not going to waste this trip. and I'm going to go and eat food that I don't usually eat. OK, I drove an hour and some change away. I went to Apple, um, spent about an hour and a half in Apple backing up my files because they were like, you know, there's no guarantee that you'll get those files back if you don't back them up right here and right now. So I paid for extra storage, backed up all my files for about an hour and a half, quite literally, I was sitting there for such a long time. The guy that helped me though was super nice. Anyway, moving on. Dropped my laptop off and then I went over to a restaurant that I don't really get to eat at often. I walked in there. I was like table for one. They were like, no problem. They walked me to a booth. I sat myself down and and at this point I was feeling a bit confident in myself. I was like, okay, I got this. This is not that bad. This is not as bad as I thought. Ordered my food waited for my food, did a little YouTube watching, you know, and it was fine. It was so okay. And I wasn't worried about the way people were looking at me. I wasn't worried about like once you get in the situation, it's not as bad as it is in your head. Your head blows it out of proportion. Okay. Like it's not as deep as you think it is. Just go to the restaurant, sit down and enjoy your meal. I was too far away. Like that was honestly my only option if I'm being totally honest because this is a restaurant that I really wanted to eat at because we don't have one near me. So I was like, I'm going to eat at this restaurant. I live way too far from home to pick up an order and bring it home. By the time I get home, it'll be cold and soggy. So this is honestly my only option unless I want to eat in my car. But at that point, it's just like, bro, just go in there and enjoy your food. You know what I'm saying? I got my food. I ate. There were people in and out of the restaurant. You know, I felt like I felt maybe a couple of glances over in my direction, but no one is really thinking about you to a point where like that they're like, oh my gosh, she's lonely. It's so sad, blah, blah, blah. I mean, if they are, you don't even like you don't you wouldn't yet, never even know if they were thinking that. So to put your mind in that space where you think that, oh, people are thinking that I'm sad and lonely. It's not even worth it. You're just giving yourself unnecessary anxiety. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I decided to turn off that and literally just look down at my plate, look down at my YouTube video and just eat my food. And it was honestly an enjoyable experience. It was this is going to sound corny, but an empowering experience because it was such something that I was like dealing with and grappling with for such a long time. And I finally sat down and did it. And so I went home just glad that I, I did what I wanted to do and not like, oh, no, I'll just wait till next time. You know, it was great. It was fine. It was it was totally OK. And I think that if you're somebody that's living in an area where you don't have many friends and there's a restaurant that you want to try, just go try it. Just go do it. Just go have it eat the food, sit in there, and you will feel so much better that you did it instead of just like waiting around for someone to go and do it with, you know? Just do it is my point. That was one of the things that I did recently that I was like, good job, pat on the back, high five, you know what I'm saying? So we did that. 
I left, I went home, and it's never that serious. There's something else that I did recently that I would never do by myself, which is honestly something that now that I'm thinking about it would have been a great pastime while I was living at college. I went to the movies by myself. I don't know why this one was such a scary one for me because I feel like when you go to the movies, you're supposed to experience it with somebody. Like anytime I've gone to the movies, I've always had someone to go with. And that's why I haven't gone to the movies recently. I mean, that and, you know, there haven't been many movies that I wanted to see in the theater. Anyway, moving on. But recently, I really, really had to see a movie. I had to see The Hunger Games, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I had to see this movie. I don't know if you understand the way my inner childhood fangirl watched that movie. It wasn't me currently. It was my inner 13 year old watching that movie. I got emotional watching that movie. Um, I was a super, am currently actually still a super Hunger Games fan. I, I loved Hunger Games. I watched the first movie when I was like, I had to be like 11, 10 or 11 because I'm pretty sure it came out before I turned 11 in 2012. So I might have been 11. I don't know. Point is, I watched that movie. I didn't want to watch that movie, actually. I went with a family member. They're like, why don't we watch this movie? And I was like, I don't want to watch that movie. That sounds like a pie eating contest. I don't want to watch that. I'm 11 years old. And we go to watch the movie anyway. And I love the movie. I'm pretty sure I love the movie because I got the book after. I read the book. I loved the book. But then I kind of forgot about it for a while. And then the next movie came out. And then I got really into it. Because if you know Hunger Games, if you know Catching Fire, Catching Fire will hit you different. That's the second book in the series, the second movie in the series. I watched Catching Fire and I absolutely loved Catching Fire. And at that point, I read the last two books very, very quickly. And I got really into the movies. I was really, I was really into it, okay? And to see, you know, years later, this prequel come out, I was so, so, so excited. I read some of the book. Actually, I didn't read the entire book. Well, anyway, I didn't read the entire prequel book. So I went into this this movie totally like unsure of how this was going to end. But the way I really had to see this movie, there was no option. There was no other option like I had to see this movie but I didn't really have anyone to go with and I didn't honestly I didn't even know if I wanted to go with anyone because no one is a hardcore Hunger Games fan that I know the way I am so I know I I I knew I had to go by myself just to fully enjoy this movie you know what I'm saying so I was like oh I don't know if I want to do this by myself but you know we we gotta do it we just gotta get over this fear I think the the initial fear for me is saying one ticket or saying table for one like that's like my main fear because I'm I'm afraid that that first person is going to judge me once I get into the theater once I get into the restaurant I'm good okay I'm fine it's just that initial fear of saying table for one or just one ticket to the Hunger Games you know like that that's that's where I think it starts but I drove up there excited and I I got my ticket I got my one ticket I got my popcorn I was a little bit anxious because there were a lot of people seeing this movie and a lot of groups of people a lot of groups of young people seeing this movie and so I walked in I picked a seat that was like right in the middle of the theater and I it was just one it's just me so I don't have to think about you know squeezing in you know with anybody else so it's just me and honestly it was a great experience I got so emotional I, I, not like so emotional watching this movie but I, I got emotional because not like crying emotional but like I said it was my inner 13 year old fangirl watching this movie not me and so they used a lot of the soundtrack and I used to listen to the soundtrack to of these movies and I heard those they, they reused a lot of the soundtrack in this new movie in almost a different way but like you heard the soundtrack from the other movies and I'm just like oh my gosh this is crazy that I'm watching this movie right now with my big girl self like I'm 22 years old the first time I watched this movie or this series, I was 11, like, this is crazy, this has been, like, a huge part of my life, anyway, I love the Hunger Games, okay, I love the Hunger Games, and I think the new movie was actually very, very good, I was a little worried about it, but the the movie was very, very good, I would go see it again, but I feel like that's a bit overkill, I don't know, but that's something else that I did by myself, that I was actually really happy that I got in the car, and I pushed myself to go do it, despite my anxiety is about looking lonely to somebody that I don't even know. That's my main point of the podcast episode. Just a couple of story times about things that I've done 
by myself recently because I really wanted to do it. I genuinely genuinely wanted to do it. I mean, I could have waited for this movie to come out on streaming services and watched it when it came out on streaming services and waited and, you know, gotten spoilers from the internet and, you know, or I could have just went to the movies and enjoyed it. And honestly, it was such an enjoyable experience to sit there by myself, eating my own popcorn, drinking my own soda, watching this movie in the middle of the theater with nobody talking next to me. You know, sometimes you go to the theater and sometimes you go with somebody that loves to talk during movies. I don't mind a little bit of, you know, comments during movies, but sometimes people you go with, they don't know how to stop talking. That is my biggest pet peeve. So I'm glad I was able to watch this movie with no distractions, fully immersed in this Hunger Games world. I was, it was great. It was perfect. It was awesome. It was great. Okay. And I'm glad that I did it. I'm glad that I went and I don't regret it. I don't feel like I was even overly anxious about the way that I look to other people. The, it's a dark theater. No one cares. Everyone's just watching a movie. Just go and see the movie, okay? Just do whatever it is that you want to do when you want to do it. Don't wait around for someone else to go and do these things with because honestly, you never know if you're even ever going to get the opportunity. You never know if someone is going to come around and even want to do this thing that you want to do. So just go and do it. Don't worry about what other people are thinking of you because honestly, they're probably not thinking about you. They're thinking about themselves. That seems kind of harsh and forward and mean, but I'm just saying like, don't make yourself lack an experience just because you don't have anyone else to do it with, okay? Honestly, doing things by yourself is more enjoyable. Unpopular opinion. Doing things on your own is more enjoyable. Depends on the person, but I, I, I like doing things by myself. I'm growing to like th- doing things by myself. Um, I'm feeling less anxious and less like sad about doing things by myself. Don't feel bad for yourself. Just do whatever it is that you want to do, okay? That's my point for today. That is my, yeah, exactly my point so if you want to go to the movies just go if you want to go try a new restaurant just go eat no one cares you might make a new friend I don't know just 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 go put yourself out there and do those things you never know what'll come of it so that's my message for you today and that's it I'm done I digress thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode if you want to follow me on my socials for this podcast my tiktok for this podcast is at introverts talk to podcast and my instagram for this podcast is at introverts talk to I hope you like this episode and I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you really do push yourself to go do something that you really want to do um, despite your situation. So that's all I have to say today. Again, have a wonderful day and I hope to have you back listening to the next podcast episode. All right, bye.